Good evening, welcome back to my channel. If you watched my last video, you'll see that we went to do a food shop at Tesco. We spent, I think, £32, so £16 per person to do our food shop for the week. And I'm gonna share with you all the meals, basically, that I'm gonna be eating this week. I filmed that video today, so this is the first meal. We've made mac and cheese. This is my 10 minute mac and cheese from my website. And I've just added extra on top. I do this pretty much every time I make this. I add broccoli, mushrooms, vegan bacon, whatever. I try and add some kind of vegetable to every meal I eat. So today we've got crispy kale, which is so easy. You just shove it in the oven with uh, olive oil, salt and pepper, and you cook it until essentially it, all the water evaporates. So as soon as it's crispy, like this, like crisps, it's ready. It takes maybe 10 minutes. Just keep an eye on it so you don't burn it. And this mac and cheese is so delicious. I've been cooking this mac and cheese since like 2017 or something. I think that's when I made this recipe. And we have it most weeks. It's so good. Mm. As the name implies, it does take 10 minutes and it's also really cheap because the main ingredient is pasta and nutritional yeast and all the rest is kind of just like covered spices. You can definitely add vegan cheese if you want to, but you don't need to. It tastes very creamy and cheesy on its own. Mmm, that was utterly delicious. Now it's time to make popcorn, which is actually something I make all the time, but I haven't really, I feel like I've never really vlogged it, which is bizarre because it's such a regular occurrence in my life. I went through a phase of buying popcorn and then I remembered that it's much easier and cheaper to make it from scratch. I used to have a popcorn machine, but it became a bit of an issue when I was having it like every night. So now I just make it on the stove and I'll do it, you know, once a week or something. Uh, all you need is popcorn kernels, coconut oil and salt. If you prefer sweet popcorn, then you can just swap the salt for sugar. I don't know if it will stick as well or I don't know how that will work, but I feel like you just sprinkle on sugar at the end and it would just, it would taste really nice. So I'm gonna show you how I do it so that it doesn't burn because it's easy to make popcorn wrong on the stove. I'm gonna make a lot of popcorn. I always make a lot, don't judge me. I just, I just love it. So I'm gonna use a lot of coconut oil. It's me and Alex are gonna be having some popcorn tonight. I don't know if we'll eat it all, but if we have, ever don't eat it, I just put it in a container and have it the next day. So I'm gonna start with, well, usually I do three tablespoons or three spoonfuls of coconut oil, but there's two of us, so. I'm guessing I'm gonna double it, so I'll do six of them. And I don't actually usually measure it. I don't know why I'm doing it that this time. I think I'm doing it just for you. You basically need a few big heat two tablespoons of coconut oil, one, two, three. And this is the trick. So turn the heat on, melt your coconut oil. And once your coconut oil is completely melted, that's when you add three popcorn kernels. And this is so that you can get the temperature correct because if you just chuck all the popcorn kernels in there, it does have a tendency to burn or not cook evenly. And then you end up with loads of kernels at the end. So if you put three popcorn kernels in there, close the lid and then wait until those popcorn kernels pop, you know that the temperature in the pan is good. You then take it off the pan, count to 30 seconds and then add the remaining popcorn kernels. This just creates the right temperature in the pan for the popcorn kernel. It was a trick I think I learned from a recipe a, like a decade ago. I genuinely don't know where I read this, but I've followed it ever since. Sometimes I still mess up, just I think maybe I don't put enough coconut, coconut oil in or I put too many popcorn kernels in. We'll see how it goes today, but it's a trick I learned a long time ago and it does really help. I do have a recipe technically for this in my old ebook. But what I'll try and do is find this recipe. It's probably a recipe that's been regurgitated all over the internet. So I'll find a version to it and link it down below uh, because then you can follow along easier than this video. <laughs> okay, so I think I have found a recipe. It's from Simply Recipes and it's showing this particular method. I think I even maybe heard it from someone or a friend or something. I don't know where I got it from, but the coconut oil is melted. So I'm gonna put three popcorn kernels in there, close the lid, and I've got it at a medium high temperature, and I'm just gonna wait for them to pop. Two of them have popped, one to go. They're all popped. So I'm gonna pour in the rest. And I don't normally measure it, but now I found that recipe, I thought may as well measure it for you so I can tell you how much I'm doing. 
So I'm doing two thirds of a cup of popcorn, take it off the heat. It's already starting to pop. Count 30. Once you've counted to 30, give it a little shimmy and put it back on the heat. And fingers crossed, it should all pop at a similar time. I'm a bit nervous about it because it doesn't usually pop like that before I take it off the heat. I think because we're using a much bigger pan than usual because I'm making more. And I'm worrying now that the bigger pan is going to change it. We'll see. I'll at least have some popcorn, even if half the kernels don't pop. But it's starting to pop. But you want it to like, you want it to go so like it starts to pop all at the same time rather than like that. I'm scared. Why am I scared? It's because I've never shared this before. That's more like it. It's getting there. Yeah, this is what you want. It's all going at the same time. And it should start to go a bit more crazy in a sec. And once it feels like it's starting to fill up and it's going properly crazy, you can give it another little shimmy just to distribute the oil a bit more. And hopefully you'll have a big pan of fresh popcorn. <laughs> I really want a pan with a see-through lid so I can watch the popcorn pop because I used to have one like that and it was quite fun. So we have our popcorn. I would definitely stick to the amount of popcorn that that recipe recommends because I do about that much. They say about a third of a cup and when I put it in the pan, I don't ever measure it. I just do like the base of the pot and I usually use a smaller pan. I'm overcomplicating this. It's not usually this complicated. I think because I did so much popcorn in such a large pot, it overheated. And then when popcorn overheats, it ends up not popping anymore. So I'm, I'm not gonna do it that way again. <laughs> I've never made this much popcorn in one go. Alex was like, I really want some, let's make extra. So yeah, just follow the recipe below and do that amount because if you do too much, it's fine though. Look, I got loads of popcorn out of it, but there's like some kernels, let me show you. So there's some kind of burnt kernels at the bottom, but hey ho. We've got some lovely popcorn and all I do is some salt, give it a little shimmy and you've got delicious popcorn. Mm. Good morning, it's Saturday morning and I'm having a protein shake. I'm having a form nutrition and I know that this is not something I bought in Tesco, uh, but I do have protein powder a lot. I know last time I think I said, I was like, oh, I'll link a cheaper protein powder below. I will try and find one. I'll link this one and I'll also try and find another vegan protein powder for you. So I'm just gonna have this and a banana because I don't actually feel that hungry, probably because of all the popcorn. And I'll just have something when we get back from the walk. We have just came home. We've changed our plans a little bit. We're walking Roxy somewhere different. So I'm just grabbing some yogurt and raspberries left from last week and seeds and like I said I think I said this in the previous video I'm gonna include the price of the food that we purchased because I in previous videos people had mentioned that it's um helpful that it would be helpful in the future for them to know like the extras that I'm adding that I didn't buy which is the raspberries and the seeds so I bought the yogurt so I'll put the price of that portion of yogurt but that's the last of the raspberries from last week, which I know are an expensive item. So I'll include like how much that would be as extra and same for the seeds. But I'm just using up what I'm having. I'm being practical and that's life. Um, you have food left over from the week before. I mean, some weeks you eat everything, but a lot of the time you have like little bits left over. So if I wasn't having raspberries, then I definitely would have a banana. Um, and I already had a banana this morning. So I would have just added extra banana to it. So it would have been the same really. But yeah, we're heading off now. Not sure what I'm gonna do for lunch just because I'm going out now and I'm not sure if I'm gonna come back home. So this may be one of the meals that I don't eat that's part of the shop because there's always one time that you're out and you can't eat from scratch at home. So we'll see, but we're having leftover mac and cheese for dinner. Good evening, I'm back home and I've just reheated myself some pasta and I'm rushing <laughs> because I'm chatting to my friend Jessica in a second and Alex made me late. There's nothing better than food that's already ready for you to eat. Good morning, it's Sunday and not, I feel bad because this video is like the weekend starting and weekends I tend to like do, do things differently but um, I'm going to spinning with my friend so I don't want to eat breakfast until afterwards. 
So I'm gonna take a banana and then have a protein shake and a coffee. I think I'll save the protein shake for afterwards. And then I'll either have brunch or lunch back at home, depending on what time I get back, because we may go for a coffee afterwards. So we shall see. Hi, I'm back from spinning. It was glorious, really, really great start to Sunday. I haven't had a proper breakfast. I had a smoothie and a protein shake um, after spinning, but I haven't had like proper breakfast lunch. So Alex has got some bread in the oven, which I probably will have maybe a little bit of once it's out of the oven because you can't not have it. But I'm making myself lunch now. So I'm gonna make a broccoli tabula salad. This is a recipe from my website, so I'll link it below, along with all the other ones that I'm sharing today. And it's a bit of meal prep because I, it should make enough that I can have lunches with it over the next few days and Alex as well. So it's quite a simple recipe. Got some lovely protein from the lentils and let me show you the ingredients. So we have got spinach. This is what we bought the other day, spinach, broccoli and lentils. And then olive oil, salt and pepper. I've got these in the cupboard because I always have mixed seeds in the cupboards. We also bought an onion the other day and a lemon. And I did actually have some garlic left over. And then I don't have ras al hanout, so I'm gonna try sumac. I know they're completely different, they're not the same, um, but I'm just gonna try something different because why not? And I haven't used this yet, I don't think. I think it's a brand new one. No, it isn't, it isn't brand new. I might use this with some chili flakes and some other spices, but let's get cooking. I also forgot there is also the dressing. So the dressing is yogurt, tahini, lemon, chili flakes, salt and pepper. So I'll get the tahini out. This is in the fridge. I always have tahini in the fridge and honestly this lasts forever because I don't use it loads. I use it like maybe once a week. So it's been going for a while. I forgot also this was what the green apple was for. Just some extra crunch. going to go in the oven for 20 to 25 minutes so this is going to go in here salad and here is the yogurt dressing so I'm gonna dish this out and Alex's bread is ready so I think I might slice into this and have it with a piece of bread there we have it it looks so so yummy and there's lots left I think this will probably serve about four people for a main portion and probably like six if you're having it on the side with something else. I feel like this would go really well if you had some kind of like meat alternative to have on the side or if you were baking some tofu. Um, oh yeah, it was just really, really good on its own. It's a perfect lunch as well uh, to enjoy. Oh, actually what would be really good with this would be some wedges on the side. Yum. I feel like it's always worth like putting the effort into making a salad, like a cooked salad. It's just so yummy. Mmm, I haven't made this salad in a while. I forgot how yummy it is. Really, really delicious. Like I said, I thought like this would be ideal if you were having like a dinner party and you were making like lots of dishes or if you're going to like a potluck or like where you're bringing sort of a dish for people. I feel like this would be a winner. And I don't know, I feel like lentils get a bad rep, but they're so delicious. I'm 
gonna steal the crust because it's the best bit to have with my salad. Oh, like it's still warm, so it's melting. Mmm. Good evening. I am making a curried chickpea stew for dinner, and it's quite simple. You just chuck it all in. <laughs> you just chuck it all in a big pan shove it in the oven and let it cook. Now this recipe suggests to cook it for two hours, which is something that you can do for a sort of slow cooked recipe. I, however, I'm gonna cook it for about an hour and just up the temperature, simply because I don't have two hours because it's six o'clock and I'm hungry. So um, I'm gonna put it in the Argo and the Argo I think is about 200 degrees, maybe 180. And it's not like it's meat where you have to cook it for two hours. If you do cook it for two hours, it just means that the flavors develop and are really yummy. So all the ingredients, oh, actually I forgot the kale. So the main ingredients are two tins of chickpeas, a tin of coconut milk, spices, um, onion, ginger, garlic, and then for toppings, some coriander or mint, lemon, and coconut yogurt, and then also um, kale, and you're propped up on the rice. So you serve it with rice, but it's a very easy recipe because you just chuck it all in a pan and then cook it, which obviously it just saves time, saves energy on those days when you just feel like you've had enough. Like I feel like today, I'm like Sunday evening, I'm ready just to chuck this in the oven and not have to think about it rather than having to stand and cook over the stove and stuff. Uh, I'm also realizing I need to get my tripod out because I can't film every clip duck down like this. But anyway, let's, let's get it all in the pan. finished product smells really good i put a little dollop of coconut yogurt on top mm. i haven't had this in a while when i made it i said to alex this is a good example of something that i want to make more with just different things because the idea of just shoving it in the oven and not having to think about it is very appealing and i don't do that often enough so you could swap the beans for any beans that you like. You could swap the spices, so you could do something totally different. Like you could do, almost do like a chili kind of vibe with kidney beans and black beans and change the spices up to be more like chili. And you could add like peppers. You could also do it with like broccoli and you can make it a bit more Thai inspired with the spices. There's like so many different ways you could do this exact thing, but just with different legumes, vegetables and spices. And also this recipe, I do suggest um, to swap out the coconut milk for chopped tomatoes sometimes if you feel like it. it gives a different different taste. But yeah, we're gonna dig into this tonight. I might have a little bit of chocolate and then I'll see you in the morning. Good Monday morning. I'm gonna make myself some mushrooms on toast. I'm undecided if I'm gonna have avocado with it because I don't know what I'm craving. So we'll see. But for starters, it's gonna be some avocado on toast with Alex's bread. this beautiful mushroom on toast. I could literally not think of a better breakfast. I know some people hate mushrooms, but if you cook them properly and you get the right mushrooms, chestnut mushrooms or shiitake mushrooms or wild mushrooms, let them cook. Don't like move them about where they get slimy and gross. Let them do their own thing. Don't like move them about in the pan too much. 
um, cook them with garlic and then when they're sort of starting to shrink and starting to look brown then you can like season it with salt and pepper soy sauce i like to use a bit of dark soy sauce because it adds this beautiful color to them and i added also some herbs in there some sort of dried mixed herbs and it's delicious like i i feel like mushrooms get a bad rep but it's just how you cook them i will use a knife and fork but just for the sake of this video i'm gonna take a bite I love mushrooms on toast. I mean, they're so good for you. Mmm, the perfect start to the week. Afternoon, time for lunch. I'm having leftovers because I made all that yummy salad yesterday. So I'm just gonna make a bowl up of that and have it with the dip as well. And I'm gonna ask Al if he wants some as well because I've made a really good amount. And actually I have leftover, hey Frankie. I have leftover lentils um because i didn't quite put all of them in so this could be used for something else later on in the week so it's gonna be yummy this was so yummy yesterday i really enjoyed it and there we go all the leftovers and there's extra extra dip because i don't think i used enough of it when we had it the other day we're having it cold today but it's delicious warm and cold so what a delicious nutritious lunch Good evening. Dinner today is leftovers. We've got the chickpea stew from last night with a dollop of yogurt and I'm very excited to dig in. I am so hungry. It's been a long work day. Mondays are always like quite a big day because there's a video that got to go live and we plan a lot of our content. So I'm excited. Good morning. It's Tuesday. Is it Tuesday? Yeah, it's Tuesday. I've made porridge. I haven't made porridge in a while. I feel like I've not been in the mood for porridge, but today I really was because it is snowing outside, or it has snowed outside. So it's super cold. So I fancied a warming bowl of porridge. But this is to me is like the perfect texture where it's a little bit runny, but also it's got, um, you know, it's like that. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it. Porridge never fails. It's like the firmest tofu ever. I'm having egg crest sandwich for lunch, which you just saw me film. I'm filming a TikTok for it. I've already filmed this on my channel before, so I'll link the video that it's in. It's in like a sandwiches video. And I thought it'd be fun to actually put this on TikTok because it's a nice egg alternative for vegans. Um, so this is my lunch. Absolutely delicious. I've got lipstick all over my face. Look at that. That's from biting into the sandwich. <gasps> and Alex made this um, loaf of bread this morning, so it's like super fresh. I have decided to have a smoothie for breakfast. I think I mentioned in the last video that we had some frozen fruit in the cupboard to use up. So I've got some frozen mango pineapple, my banana. I think I'm gonna put the rest of the coconut yogurt that we got into it. I would have... I'm tempted to have avocado toast. I might have some avocado toast afterwards, depending on how hungry I am. Because I do notice that when I have a smoothie, I get a little bit hungry because it doesn't totally fill you up, does it? Um, I used to have smoothies and just kind of ignore that. <laughs> but I just find if I have a smoothie without something solid, um, it's not just isn't the best for my digestion and I'd end up feeling a bit hungry like mid mid morning So I'm just gonna have a smoothie and I think I'm gonna put my protein powder in there and these pineapple mango papaya a banana coconut yogurt water and some chia seeds gone green. 
green. And I'm trying to figure out why it's green. Maybe it's the protein powder. I didn't put anything green in there. <laughs> I actually do think that this protein powder, this form super blend, I think it does have greens in it. So yeah, it's got a blend of greens and fruit powders, so that's why. <laughs> also the green glass probably makes it more green. Mm, oh my gosh. That tastes so delicious. I really miss, I, I feel like because it's been winter, I don't know about you, I don't eat a lot of fruit or I like don't crave fruit. I'll have like berries occasionally and I have like apples and bananas and sometimes I'll have um, frozen berries. But I just don't crave fruit and I suppose living in England, there's just not like an abundance of fruit available in the winter. I'm trying to eat more seasonally. And someone actually did leave a comment saying, oh, you didn't eat any fruit, I think in the previous what I eat in a week. And I do eat fruit, but I just, I do think it does apply to where you live in the world and the seasons. And in the UK, it's apples and pears and things like that, which obviously I do eat and they're delicious. We've got a lovely apple tree. We had plenty of apples <laughs> over the winter to enjoy, but it does reduce a lot. And then when it comes to spring, summer, I do start to crave um, fruit a lot more and smoothies. And I'm just looking forward to it now. I know that obviously mango, pineapples, that kind of thing, aren't from the UK and I've got them in a frozen packet, but you know what I'm saying? Um, let me know if you're similar, that you tend to eat a lot less fruit in the winter and then you eat a lot of fruit in the summer. Oh my gosh, so yummy. Yo, I just made myself an egg and cress sandwich because we have leftovers. Alex is having the same, it's on his desk. That was quite the sigh. <laughs> oh, this is so good. I'm having a bit of a working lunch because I want to tick off a few things that are on my mind, but this is such a great sandwich filler. I mean, homemade bread. And also what I'm gonna experiment with, let me know if you've got tips, is that the cress um, that came in the little plastic container, I have watered it and put it on the windowsill to see if it regrows. My instinct is that it would do because it's um, got all the shoots at the bottom because you don't eat those. I mean, maybe you can eat those. Um, so I think that, the, that it should regrow, but I'll update you in the future if that does work. Um, I'm so hungry. Mm. Good evening, it's evening. We are having a smoked tofu tray bake, tray bake? Smoked tofu tray bake this evening. Alex is cooking, so I'll pop the camera on a little tripod or something to film him chop. I think it's just chopping vegetables, putting it in a gratin dish and then shoving it in the oven. So very easy, but I'm hungry. Dinner is served. Smells really good. Sorry if I'm lacklustre, I'm really tired. It's been a long Monday. Wait, it's Wednesday, what's my brain doing? Such a yummy sauce. made myself some avocado toast because it's a little bit later in the morning it's like quarter to 11 so it's kind of brunch and oh, I just I don't know why I'm obsessed with avocado toast at the minute incredible I'm gonna make myself a coffee to go with this so 
So leftovers for lunch. I still look a bit of a mess, but it's a bit of a no makeup chill day. And I'm so glad that we have leftovers. I really enjoy doing these week of meals because it does motivate me to plan my week and decide what we're having ahead of time, which some weeks when you're busy, you just forget to do and you end up just sort of um, cooking and eating as you go. Every time I do these weeks where I budget it and I uh, film it for you, I'll plan out the meals and it does make things a lot easier. And I, I do afterwards then continue that for a few weeks and then I end up forgetting because life gets in the way, but it really does help so much to plan your week of meals, um, look at recipe cookbooks, go online, find some fun, exciting new meals that you haven't tried before and try and find budget friendly ones. So either cut out ingredients that are expensive or find alternatives. So I don't know, maybe a recipe has got dates in it, medjool dates, and you can swap that out for brown sugar. Or if a recipe has a vegetable that is more expensive or you don't have access to, swap it out for the one that you buy regularly that you know is affordable and write a list of recipes you want to try, check out how many people it serves and then you have leftovers for lunch, you maybe have dinners for two nights in a row and you'll find that you can actually cook some really fun delicious meals that maybe you think would be expensive because you're just planning and you're budgeting and I noticed that this time round because we purchased avocados, coconut yogurt, coconut milk, lots of tofu, ingredients that in my mind I think of as quite expensive vegan ingredients and they are expensive vegan ingredients that maybe in the past videos I've kind of omitted entirely. But when you plan it properly, you can actually buy those things. They can fit within a budget if you just plan properly. And I know that lots of us watching probably eat out sometimes or get takeaways or deliveries or just you know eat what you'll have it when you're out at work maybe you just run to the cafe and get something and with the cost of living crisis it's probably making a lot of us rethink our eating habits and rethink how we're affording things and I know there's a whole group of people who um, have been doing this for a very long time and have always had to think about their food and now it's becoming an actual crisis in their lives and I suppose I just I just want to encourage those of you watching to just, yeah, just hopefully help with the budgeting, help with the, the planning and the thinking, because there are so many ways that you can save money at, at, in your diet and, and also improve your health because you're cooking more from scratch. Stuff like this, it's cheap, it's healthy, it's delicious, and it stopped me from getting something, I don't know, a lot of the time in the past, I'd be like, I don't know what to have for lunch, so I'm gonna have a wrap with some vegan cheese and some tofu and salad, and that can add up, like that can become expensive if you're doing that or if you're having uh, vegan alternatives, or you're just having the same meals over and over again, or I don't know, I'm going on now, you get the picture, but it's really, really helpful to plan your week, and you can still enjoy lots of yummy, delicious foods, and you don't really actually have to cut stuff out necessarily. Recipes like this and planning, it just makes a world of difference. So I'm gonna enjoy this for my lunch. The dressing is what makes this so yummy. Really, really good, because it's like really sweet. I'm not sure this is in the recipe, I think Alex might have added this, but the roasted garlic. Oh my goodness, best bit. Good evening, we're making my winter veg gratin this evening. I think this is probably gonna make enough for like leftovers tomorrow for like lunch and dinner, we'll see. Uh, but it's really quite simple. We've got savoy cabbage, we bought that savoy cabbage. It's half of the cabbage. Um, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, I think I'm only gonna use half of this, I'm trying to remember. I don't really remember, but I know that we did have a broccoli in the cupboard. Fridge, fridge, cupboard. Pinto beans, and then we've got a couple spices. Nutritional yeast, whole grain mustard, corn flour, oat milk, butter. So yeah, it's a really simple recipe. I'll leave it linked down below. It's essentially, you blanch the vegetables and then you put everything into a dish with like a, a, a milky sauce. Let me just check. Yeah, so you mix the corn flour with a little milk to form a paste. Um, oh yeah, no, you have to make a white sauce, I'm remembering now. So you blanch the veg, you make a, a white sauce, you mix it all together in a pan, put some breadcrumbs on the top and then roast it in the oven. And I think you roast it in the oven for half an hour until golden brown. It's very delicious and it's also quite easily adaptable depending on the time of year. Obviously it's called a winter veg gratin, but you definitely could make this in spring or autumn. Maybe not summer, maybe not the sort of thing you'd want to eat in summer because you'd be a bit warm. Um, but you could make it with different vegetables that are seasonal, which is really great. So I'm gonna get cooking, because I'm hungry. I've just used the Peloton, so I need to be fueled.
Dinner's ready. Look at that. I'm probably gonna burn my mouth eating this, aren't I? Mm -hmm. I love this meal. So comforting. It's really like cozy. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Also, you could definitely put vegan cheese on top of this. I think this was from a winter budget video, so I didn't include that. But you could definitely put um, cheese on top of the breadcrumbs and let that melt. But it tastes 10 out of 10. We're gonna go finish White Lotus. Good evening. Final day and we have enough leftovers from the gratin that I had it for lunch and I'm having it for dinner. Um, it's in the the microwave, but here's Alex's, Alex's lot. <laughs> but yeah, I had that for lunch and I just forgot to film because it was leftovers and it was boring. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will be doing a cupboard, cupboard? Cupboard clear out edition for my next week of meals, which one of you requested, I think in the, the haul. So I'm gonna be decluttering my cupboard. So stay tuned for that, the pantry cupboards and the kitchen and the whole house. And I'm gonna make like a little bit of a list of what we've got in the cupboard and then go shopping and try and like do the most budgeted shop ever where I just go and get like fresh ingredients or just go get vegetables and try and use everything up. So that should be a fun, creative experiment where I can like just try and figure out what to cook from the cupboards um, and see what recipes I can follow, but also adapt to what we have, which will be really fun. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you subscribe, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it. I'll leave a link to the playlist of all my grocery shops up here somewhere. And yeah, thanks for all the support on these videos because you're loving them. And I'm gonna try and do one every month for you, um, some grocery shop and a week of meals and alternate and see, see how it goes. So leave any requests on sort of themes. Obviously we'll do the usual shops, but yeah, let me know and I'll see you in the next one.